Ah, hello. I would like to thank the invitation. It's an honor to be here in Padova. That's such an important town for science. Um, and it's an honor being here uh, presenting this project, which I'm really proud of. I've been working in it for more than 10 years. And especially after this uh, very dark time in Brazil for sciences, it's a pleasure to, to present this project here. Um, the Hiflora project is more than the Hiflora, you'll see, it's more than the virtual herbarium. It, it comprises more, many projects, but I'm going to show some of the background and how we manage data inside the system. I'm a botanist. I'm not exactly from IT. Tiago asked me, who's here, um, asked me, what exactly do you mean by IT? And I said, anyone that works with technology, and I'm just a, a, an interface between taxonomists and the developers. So I'm sorry if I say something wrong from the technology side, or, and I apologize my English as well. So, um, the Convention on Biological Diversity took place in Rio, which beca became known as Rio Earth Summit in 1992. And the intention is to stop the loss of biodiversity and to show the importance of biodiversity. Um, and it has three main objectives. The conservation of biological diversity, the sustainable use of its components, and the fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from the utilization of these genetic resources. And preserving this, uh, di the biological diversity is not just important for us, but for, uh, also for future generations. From the Convention on Biological Diversity came the Global Strat Strategy for Plants Conservation, which seeks to, to halt uh, the loss of plant diversity. And it comes from the fact that without plants, there's no life. Uh, the functioning of the planet depends on this, from the air we breathe, to the climate, to uh, what we eat, um, what we dress, it's very important. And the objectives of this convention is that the plant diversity needs to be well understood, documented, and recognized. Uh, it needs to be urgently and effectively con uh, conserved. It's used, uh, must be done in a sustainable and equitable manner. The education and awareness about the plant diversity and its role in sustainable livelihoods and importance to all life on Earth has to be promoted. And the capacities and public engagements necessary to implement the strategies have to be developed. The strategy had goals for 2010, and after that, goals defined to 2020. What do we need to understand, document, and recognize plant diversity. First of all, we need systematic bot botanical studies. How do we do that? Collecting, collecting, and collecting. Going to field and collecting as much as we can, especially in places where we have no information about, such as the Amazon, or not no information, but we have less information than many places. So we need to go to field and collect. After collecting, what we do in botany is that we dry press the plants, we put them in cardboards with notes, information on where they came from, the names, uh, who collected, when, how was the environment, characteristics of the plant when it was not dry, because sometimes they lose their characteristics. Um, and we keep them in herbariums, in botanical collections, dried collections, to be able to study them. Um, and these collections need to be accessible to everyone, to, to taxonomists, to study and to understand the patterns and understand the diversity and how, what do we have. So we need data computerization and we have information access policies. In 2009, Brazil started with the list of species of Brazilian flora project. Um, which 
aim to gather all the information on the flora as possible on a, a public list available to everyone. So we gathered all the existing information, all the existing data on one platform, and in nine months, invited taxon taxonomists started reviewing this data and checking on names, checking on informations we had. We had geographical informations, environmental informations, and for nine months, these taxonomists worked in this database to check all the information that was already there. So, and we had many floras. We had many floras, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna point. Um, and we also had an international database, such as the International Plant Name Index, that gave us, we, uh, gave us the names that they had for Brazil, that were described for Brazil, is a platform that um, put all the, the, the names that are validly published. So they, they had a list for us, so we had an, a good input of data into the system before the taxonomists could work. So we had over 500 invited taxonomists to do this, working online. Um, and every taxonomist had access, specific access inside the platform, so they only accessed certain taxa uh, they worked with, they were invited for the, the work they had been doing. Uh, and it was structured in a way, we had all plant groups, or, or not plant groups, sorry, all the groups that were historically worked by botanical, botanists, uh, including fungi, which, yes, now it's funga, it's flora and funga. Um, and it was structured in a way that uh, a, a species could only be uh, under its genus, and a valid genus could only be under a certain family. So you could not have different uh, genera in different families. So the, the, the name with its author was all structured not to have, in a way, not to have, uh, you know, mixed information or, as you can see here, So we achieved the first uh, target. Every objective in the GSPC had targets, and the first target was making a list. And we achieved this first target in 2010. We developed this functional list, um, and we published in a web page and a physical catalog, gigantic physical catalog. This is just, you know, because we had to, but we had a very nice platform with more than 41,000 species, with its occurrence uh, confirmed to the country, either by a voucher, a, a herbarium specimen, or a literature citing it to Brazil. And also, we had uh, an article with a summary of all the information. So after that, in 2010, we launched the, the National Council research launched the HIFLORA program, which aimed to repatriate high-resolution images of the botanical specimens that were collected in the early days in Brazil by foreign taxonomists, by foreign naturalists, and were basically deposited in, in European herbaria. Uh, these specimens made the nomenclatural types, were, were the, the comparison uh, the, the base for any taxonomic study in plants, and they were all, m most of them deposited in, in Europe. So our first collection, our first partnerships were the Royal Botanic Gardens Q and the Natural History Museum of Paris, um, and the, the Rio de Janeiro Botanical Garden as well. We started then uh, digitalizing these three collections. We captured the, after, take, after digitalizing it, we captured the metadata to input the system. Um, and this was all done within the botanical garden uh, facilities and system. Um, on, and we published everything on a platform developed by the Rio de Janeiro University, um, the COPY, which is within the, the university. 
I'm, I'm especially proud to present this because most of this project was done within public institutions and, you know, in Brazil this is very important, especially after the dark times I told you. Um, we had these three partners using different methods to digitalize, it didn't matter to us how it was made, um, but we had all of them, uh, this is Hugh, uh, Paris, and here at the Botanical, Rio Botanical Garden. They all digitalized and sent the high resolution images to Rio de Janeiro Botanical Garden where we would capture the metadata and store the images in our servers. So this is the transcription uh, platform. It was developed inside the system we had to manage our herbarium. So the Rio Botanical Garden had already this experience of developing a system for capturing uh, herbarium data. So we had the knowledge and we had the platform. Um, and we, we developed this part uh, to just to tr transcribe the data from the images we were receiving. So the, the person could see the image and make zooms on the high resolution image and transcribe all the information uh, next to it. And it's not always easy to understand the information and to, you know, to understand what you have to transcribe there and read the handwriting. And so we had taxonomists helping um, and coordinating this and supervising the digitization. Sometimes you have more than one collection. Each collection has a barcode, which is an ID, a an, an unique ID. And so you can see that you have many barcodes in one image, in one specimen. And you had to understand each specimen was related to each barcode and to which information. In 2014, the National Forest Inventory and the Brazilian Information, the Brazilian System on Biodiversity Information, uh, started helping, the, started participating on the Herflora project. And this allowed us to uh, make improvements on the system we had and some basic maintenance, obviously, because systems always need lots of maintenance. Um, and we were, we were also able to include new partners in this initiative. We were able to include a national herbaria that had no uh, digitization or had not, nothing on, on database or photographs. And we also could include uh, foreign institutions that were also important that, um, apart from the two previous ones, and we included American and some European uh, collections. This also allowed us in the National Herbaria to uh, give or to buy uh, new equipments for the Herbaria, uh, such as computer, simple as computers, um, and to mount, um, to, to put in operation uh, photographing stations some of them were kept in, in large collections, and some of them just went around different institutions to, so that we could have as much as possible of uh, digitalized collections. <clears throat> this is a little bit how it looks like. You won't be able to see anything, but it's just a, a simple page with the history, and it has a, our contact and how to cite, and a basic search uh, paid form. Sorry, the, the address is a bit broken, but you can still see it. And the search form has basic information such as names, such as taxonomy and collection number, geographic uh, informations, just all the informations that usually are on a label, on a taxonomic label, on a botanical label. We can also, uh, the user can also make searches on a map and we, the results can come on a map, and you can see here that uh, we can have uh, georeference uh, specimens, but for those that are not georeference, 
the system can infer the, the, the coordinates from the, the municipality or so, and, and it's, it's shown in red. This, also, this helps us to know where we, we lack collections and where, you know, we have many informations that we can extract from there. This is the basic uh, search result. In red, we have the nomenclatural types, which are really important to us. And we have here, that I wanted to show, I'm not sure you can read, probably not. Um, we can, the user can um, extract Darwin Core um, format uh, report, can extract a determination report, insert tags, there are some uh, very nice tools that the, the user can, can use, but the ones I would like to highlight especially is the Darwin Core format um, export and determination. This is the basic specimen file. It brings all those informations. Um, the high quality images are available uh, for very good, it's a very good quality image. You can, you can zoom in and it has a tool for measuring, which is really important for the Flora uh, project, which I'll show you next. Uh, and the users that have login can, can edit most of the information and can help us improve the information that is there. So we have, uh, the, the user can edit the specimen data, which is basically collector and number and ge uh, geographical information, and also the, the location. Yeah, the, The system can associate duplicates. So if we have two different specimens in, in herbaria and they're both inside the system, the system can connect them. And this will allow uh, if the, 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 the user gives a new determination, he can spread this determination to the duplicates. He can spread uh, corrections as well. And the system will give some options. Here I have just one option here, but it will uh, give options based on the collection number, name, to possible duplicates. Um, here is the, how it looks like. The, I keep trying to point there. <laughs> um, and the system uses the flora uh, system and the International Plant Name Index as validation for new identifications. Uh, the, the international plant name is used for collections that are from outside Brazil because the, the Brazilian flora is our, diction, our official dictionary for names of plants. So it, for a collection that is made outside Brazil and, and then you can use a name from outside Brazil, the system will use the IPNI. Uh, the data input is made through IPT uh, links, internet, inter, I forgot the name. Um, IPT is from GBIF, the Global Biodiversity Facility. And it can also be done through a regular spreadsheet using the Darwin Core uh, fields. We just, uh, since not all institutions have an IPT, we just put all the, the important fields that we need for, from the Darwin Core and we used on a spreadsheet for any institution to use. Inter International Publishing Toolkit, that's IPT. So this, the, this new phase of the project also allowed us to expand the list to the flora of Brazil, the Brazilian flora 2020. Um, it's, it was the, the first target for the GSBC for 2020 was coming from a list to an online flora with descriptions and uh, all the morphology on the plants. And this was done from 2016 to December 2020. This included the nomenclature and life form and substrate that we had already on the system and the distribution 
We just improved that system we had and increased the information uh, with morphological descriptions, identification keys, uh, more images. Now that we had the virtual herbarium with many herbariums in it, we, we were able to improve um, the possibility of, of associating vouchers. Um, field photographs and botanical illustrations. This is still how we work. They used to do this in the 18th, 19th century and we still go to field to collect and to put plants in herbarium. We still do the same and it's really important. Um, so we had working online on a crowdsourcing, 979 taxonomists, most of them Brazilians, from 224 institutions and 25 countries. And this time, instead of inviting the taxonomists, we had the proposals, they, they would propose monographs, um, and we did this in a way to, to include more people and have younger people and that were not, that were not in leading uh, positions to be part of it. Um, and it, it obviously increased the amount of people we had working on it. And it was really good. Um, so the users uh, continued having strict access to the, the taxa that they proposed. And we had, um, we could give permissions and give different, I'm not sure if you can see, but um, you, the person could be a coordinator, be just a collaborator or just an author and not exactly working because we obviously had people from different ages and we had people that obviously were not intimate with systems and couldn't really work that were the ones that had more knowledge and they didn't have to be a coordinator or or maybe just didn't work exactly there, but they were acknowledged as an author because of the work they had done previously. So we had different uh, types of profiles inside the system. And we also have uh, the possibility of including uh, a, a start and end, ending date for that permission as well. And having this link with the, the taxa that they are working may give us some possibilities to to make uh, to give tools to the to the users, such as uh, give an idea of the last determinations on the virtual herbarium from their groups. Um, this is the the basic work workspace where every user, when every user enters, so we have uh, uh, news and we have latest updates on the flora and on the virtual herbarium. How, how did we do it? Because it, it was a lot of things, many taxa to describe. It's, it's big work to do. So we decided to use control dictionary, uh, which um, had uh, every, every word it was the, the dictionary was established by the, the committee, the scientific committee, and uh, the, only only if the taxonomists needed a very different, uh, very specific word from their group that the word would be admitted. Otherwise, it was a controlled dictionary. This way, we could have every word in Portuguese, English, and Spanish to be uh, easier to to translate the system and also thinking that we could use in the future or help in the future our neighbors in Latin America to use the same system to do their floras. Um, and this prevented as well, uh, obviously typos and uh, different words for the same thing, such as colors. In Portuguese, we use for orange color, we also use pumpkin color. So we, we wanted everyone to use one word for the same thing. And this worked really well. Um, the authors had to check 
on a, um, a responsibility check box saying that they are responsible. It, it's, it, they have the authorship of the, the work and they have to be responsible for what they're doing. Um, and after they, they did that first form, um, they went to the, the species form just to check the information. I forgot to mention here that we had default characteristics as well. So if a characteristic is really stable, though, or it's very common, they could put the default and that would be checked on most of them or in all of them, and then he would, he would just uncheck and check the other option on those that were not. So it was very easy to fill in the, the information. He would just go in the form and just check all the information, and we had a maximum of 20 state of characters, so it was not very much uh, to check. And they are related to each part of the, of the plant is, is divided in the different parts, so roots, branches, leaves, inflorescence, and they could choose for their groups which, make, which made more sense for their groups, the variation of characteristics. And this also allowed us to have an automatic generated description of, of every check, every characteristic that was checked. Um, you can see here the the generated description. And also we had a field to, to insert uh, the uh, keys for, for um, identifying the, specimen, the species. And the keys could be interactive keys or dichotomous keys that the, the user would just write. It's a pretext field for writing which is more common for us. Uh, it's more common having a descriptive key, dichotomous key, than an interactive key. It's, it's, it's starting, kind of, the, the interactive key. Um, and we also had more voucher specimens to include. Uh, and the, vou the, this, the image search is by the name or and its synonyms. The, the whole system has association between valid names and synonyms. So when it searches for the, the image, it searches for the, the, the name, the actual name that the user is working on, and its synonyms. This is how it looks like after the, it's complete, with the description, with the voucher, with the synonyms here. And it says if it's accepted, or it's a synonym. And after all this, we achieved uh, the first goal, the first target for the GSPC for 2020 as well. Um, Brazil has one of the largest diversity of plants in the world. We have almost 47,000 species of plants, algae and fungi. We have 55% of terrestrial plants endemic to Brazil that only occur in Brazil. And 10% of all terrestrial plants are in Brazil as well. This is how, uh, this is, there's a, a virtual catalog and you can, from there, it's linked to the monographs. Here is a, an example of the monograph. I'm sorry, it doesn't look really good, but, and this is the, the public file, how it looks like with all the information, all the geographic information, the substrate, the um, form of life, um, vouchers and bibliographies and uh, images and field. This beautiful work had the participation of almost a thousand taxonomists and they are all author on the pro of the the project and the article that came out of it. Um, and we have this, uh, we, we're called a BFG, the Brazil Flora Group. And all of this was in the botanical garden infrastructure. We had to invest in generators, uh, servers, storages, no breaks. Um, 
And now since 2019, we're going to the cloud and we're keeping everything on Amazon uh, Web Service. And we're putting all our databases, all the images, we have almost four million images in the virtual herbarium, high resolution images. Um, the numbers are just amazing. We have four million, but to, to be able to do the Zoom uh, efficiently, this, the server has to break down the image in many pieces. So we have like billions of images, billions of pieces inside our service. The numbers are, are well, maybe uh, compared to proteins and things like that, it's not as much, but it's a lot. <laughs> Um, this is just to show that we had in, in the Botanical Garden uh, the system for curatorial uh, information to, to work on. We started with the Botanical Garden collection and with all the support we had, we were able to uh, share this with many other institutions. Um, we had previously, before that, basically um, an offline uh, program that was mainly used by, by the, the herbariums that was really hard to use, very unfriendly. And Jabot is the, our, our system, um, put all these collections online with uh, a support, which the other one didn't have support, but with good support, with a network of other curators working on it and improving it. And we evolved to several models inside the same system. And we were able to help these collections to digitalize the information and put their image online as well using our servers. Um, and we created other modules inside the same system. Uh, not just for the herbarium specimens, but also for the botanical garden collections with the living collection. Uh, we have tools for curatorial uh, work for, uh, to help them manage uh, problems in the database, um, mistypings and different uh, curatorial tools. Um, we help with the data publishing, with data papers. Um, we help in the data quality. Uh, there's also a tool for generating species list. We are now uh, creating a species list of uh, conservation units. So we have one part of the system that is all related to this. We have several conservation units already that have species list inside our system and they use obviously the vouchers that, uh, from the virtual herbarium. Um, we have a taxonomy module and associated collections, uh, especially from the living collections and different collections from the herbarium because we have wood collections, uh, we have tissue collections, so it's all related inside the same system. We have now 77 herbaria using it and botanic gardens. Um, and we have uh, one of the tools that we, we developed, which may be very simple, but it was a problem to us when we started, and we realized that it was going to be a problem for, for all the herbarias, was generating barcodes. Um, and we did just a simple barcode generator, and this helped or, or uh, made it much, much easier, the process of uh, digitalizing and associating the images to the metadata. We, we started looking in the internet how to generate barcodes and we had, we had to find a solution for this. Is, this is just so simple and it's, it just stops everything. And our IT guys included this in our system. And uh, we provide data to many platforms, um, to the National Center of Conservation of the Flora, uh, to the World Flora Online, because if we remember, the GSPC targets were a global 
global targets, and each country should individually uh, accomplish the target to have a global uh, flora. And so we provide the data for the World Flora Online. Um, also, we have everything published on DBIF. Um, we have, uh, we work with the, with the biodiversity information system, providing the names um, and the vouchers as well. Um, this is the catalog I was telling you about of the conservation units. Um, and we also have associations um, with other databases such as Tropicus, which is a very important uh, database for plants. Um, and there, there's a link, direct link to the Flora do Brasil. Uh, and the same we have on the flora. We, here is horrible, I'm sorry, but here we show uh, the, the national uh, conservation list. We show the status on the flora, um, and we obviously serve as a dictionary for them. We operate under the fair principles. We have everything published on on GBIF. Not not just we have each collection here. Each collection that is on the virtual herbarium has a. a it has a resource on IPT. Um, and we also have the whole flora published here. Uh, we work on the CC BY. And we have, um, the, the users can make, create reports on the, the searches they do to extract the data they need. So now we have almost four million images on virtual herbarium. We have 76 herbarium working with us. We have 40 photograph stations all around Brazil, either stationary on a, on a collection or going around collections to help uh, other herbarium, many herbarium at once. We have trained more than 200 people in capturing metadata and photographing specimens, botanical specimens and also on how to send the images. We, we send them through FTP and how to manage all the, this, this information. The flora and fungi of Brazil has almost 47,000 species. Um, and we have now almost 1,000 taxonomists working on it. And the next step will be the Brazilian catalog of life. We're now including, Brazil is including the other organisms. We had uh, these, um, I think it, they started in 2018, I think, I'm not sure. But uh, using the, our same system for the flora, the, the fauna started uh, working on their information. Unfortunately, they didn't meet the target, but it was, they, they achieved a lot of of things, and now we're including in this system the other microorganisms uh, using, and the botanical garden will be the, the main coordinator of this project um, using our expertise on you know, how to coordinate this big um, idea. And it was it, I hope I could give my message. Thank you very much. So because this is the, excuse me, because this is the first uh, end of the talk, the way that the questions are gonna work is you can feel free to come to the side and they will hand you a microphone and you can ask. If you don't want to ask a question uh, over the speaker, you can try posting it on Twitter, and we'll also walk, look through those and check out uh, if you hashtag with BioCuration2023. So yeah, thank you. And, and so do we have anyone to start? Hi, uh, great talk. Um, will you be associating genomes with the data in the future? Because there's a lot of initiatives now of sequencing the genomes. Have you thought about that? I'm not sure they have thought about this. Um, 
to be honest, I wouldn't know how to associate exactly. Um, I mean, we could have an associated database for each species. We could. Um, yeah, I was, I was thinking about kind of reference genomes. There's a, there's a lot of initiatives now to do the reference genomes for different species. It's, it's so, so I was wondering whether you, you're involved in... It's perfectly in feasible. I mean, we have I, I, uh, unique IDs and the, the, you know, the names. I, I think it's perfectly feasible. Okay, thank you. Thanks, that's absolutely f f fascinating. Another obvious question, soil samples. Uh, and uh, can you do any association of the, well, three questions, sorry, associating the microbes with particular plants? And the other thing, do you actually stop at the seashore or do you go into the uh, seaweeds? We go into seaweeds. We have um, terrestrial and marine seaweeds, uh, algae. Um, we have uh, the, we have uh, the terrestrial biomes, and we also have the um, how do you say that on the the, the hydrogeographic the basins or sorry I forgot the word. Um, so we don't stop on the fresh water or the um, and the soil. I'm not sure how they're gonna associate if they're going to associate inside the system. I'm not sure, but also it's feasible. It's perfectly feasible. It's, it should be easy. If they know which organism it has to be linked, is, it's easy. But we're just starting. We have just signed the, the you know. <laughs> They're just starting now. They didn't have any platform whatsoever. So we're, we're getting there. Hi, a uh, very fantastic talk and your amazing work. Does it happen that the two taxonomists, two experienced taxonomists, come with different taxonomy for the same specimen for their valid reason? And how, if they do, how would you, uh, how would you solve that situation? Actually, it's just like in a physical herbarium. Um, any taxonomist can give a name and we have, I'm sorry, I didn't show because the image was not very good, but we have the history of the, the determination history. So you have the names there and who determined the specimen. And when you're using it, you have to choose anyway, even when you're, the, the one that will be shown there, it's the latest. Um, but you, you, as a user, and if you, if you need to use that data, you're going to have to choose which, which taxonomist you, you, know, you think it's more correct or you, you trust more. Or if you don't know, you just use the name that is currently there, right? So it's just in a, like in a, a regular herbarium where you have to look at the determinations and say, okay, this person did the revision of this name, of, of this group. So I'm going to trust him or, you know, it's, it, there isn't a, a curatorial work on this. Um, we don't, we just let them put the names and we have all the information there. Thank you. Um, right here. Uh, hello, Paula. Thank you. Here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the, thank you for the great talk. So if I understood correctly, uh, First, you invite the taxonomist to contribute the data, and then in the second moment, you kind of make an open call for people to contribute. I think there, there are many projects here that uh, work in that interface of maybe have some kind of crowd creation or community contributions. And I want to know a bit more, when you opened the platform for open contributions, what's changed? Do you get like uh, more contributions, but the, la the, the quality was lower or the quality was good, but you get also more diversity. So how was this shift from expert selection for, to the, the community kind of more based creation? It definitely improved, definitely in, in any way. Of course, there's more people to work with and there's more people to deal and more, you know, many more desires and, and, you know, but it definitely improved because what we saw earlier was that we had many people that were, you know, owners of a, a 
plant family. I own the orchids and I'll invite just my students or just the ones. And there was someone else that was very productive but was not in that group. So it did improve. We had much more quality and, and we had many people interested in, in working. So it, it, was, it was more democratic. It was, it was refreshing actually. It, was, it, it improved, definitely. Thank you. First of all, that is amazing to get a thousand curators to agree on describing something with just 20 <laughs> characteristics. Um, so first question, you know, how did you get them to just stick to 20 characteristics and describing how many was it? Nearly 47,000 species. And the second question, is this system expandable to any geographic locations? So could someone do, you know, just take the, fra the DIT frameworks or the database and do it for European plants or African plants or anything? So we... The thousand people working on it had specific login, so they couldn't just work on anything. So they they had a cert, some kind of you know limit <laughs> in their work, um, and also it was a very important work for any botanist. So it was they they wanted to do that. It was very important for them to participate on that, and it was a work that was achieving its goals it was you know so everyone was moved by the by the project everyone was really engaged uh, it was a big thing we 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 got the the national council research council to to recognize obviously they were the ones that, who who wanted it but to recognize it and give more um, value to it so everyone was engaged they wanted that and since they had only their group, their taxonomic group to work on, there wasn't much, of course there was always some fights and things like that, but it was reduced by this, by the, the restrictions they had. Um, and yes, it is, it, you, we can take the, the system to any country that wants. We, we decided to do bilingual, well, actually it is in English as well, uh, but we decided we needed to have it in Spanish as well because it was we knew that Brazil would be the only one, at least in Latin America, to to accomplish this. And we had the experience, we had developed the previous system, so we had already the thing moving, you know. So we said we have to take this chance that uh, we're, that we're doing, we're improving the system to make the flora. We have to do it in Spanish as well to help any country that needs, because uh, we don't need every country creating new systems and you know spending all their time and money to do again what we have done, and it works. So yes, it is. It is possible to, to use it anywhere. And obviously in other languages as well, you just have to translate it. The structure is there, the system is there. The idea. Um, thank you. It was really a great talk. Um, I have probably half a dozen of questions, but let's make only two. So, you mostly annotate based on monographs. That's my understanding. I guess many of these contents is not open access at all. It's not at all fair. How do you overcome this issue? So, do, do you at the end do you? The Turn previous input. The previous input. You yes. Mean? It's the basic. Basically, is the community. Uh, the community wanted this system to work. They were the ones that have done the works. So we just had a big effort of botanists uh, giving because it was all published data, right? So yeah, yeah but. Can I get access to to this line? If I Google them, will I find them, or they are just on paywall? Uh, yeah, some of them not. They, they, you won't find. Yeah. Um, but then it's not fair. <laughs> but you okay. don't need it now. You have the flora. Okay. Okay. Already. <laughs> okay. I don't need that. We can. I, I know. I think there are services like Treatment Bank, Platzi, that turn this data into fair content. So, I don't know if you ever considered this. No, I'm sorry. 
Yeah. And um, so you said there are actually, sometimes you have more than um, um, meta barcoding for, same, for different specimen of the same species. Does it mean that these are different species? No, what we had, well, a specimen is just a, a sample of a species, right? Yes. Uh, one specimen, or what, what was considered to be a specimen in the past could have more than one collection in it. And for each collection, we must have one barcode to have an, a, a unique ID for that collection. So when, when we realized we had more than one collection in one sheet, we just put more than one barcode. We, we put one barcode related to each collection. And then you had an, uh, an unique ID for each collection. So it can be different species, definitely. So occasionally, it's the same. It's just the same species, two specimen, two different barcode. But occasionally, what you, the way you cluster them happen to be not the same species. It can. It can happen. But we, since we have uh, different barcodes, we can uh, associate it to different names because they, are d they have unique IDs for themselves. So they're kind of different collections, but they're glued in the same cardboard. That's the idea. Okay, so someone else could come there and disambiguate the taxonomy later on yes. to, to, to split them. A curator, yeah, a curator. usually. The, you. Usually when, when you're, you're curating the collection, you see, oh, this, and, and sometimes you can see that they, they have written, oh, the number da-da-da and the number da-da-da. So it was, so, so, sometimes so it's easy to find out and sometimes it's not. And it needs a curatorial work, hard work. I see, I see, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. So uh, while listening to this talk, I, I realized that uh, I'm learning a lot about this, and I want to know a little bit more about who the stakeholders are that consume this content and what kind of things they do with it. And after knowing a little bit more about that, I'd be curious about what kind of biocuration or, or other kinds of curated resources might be interesting to integrate with what you're doing that, that have been curated in other groups for other purposes, but because you put so much effort in, in the end to mapping to other kinds of vocabularies, even once developed outside of the project, you know, are there potentially, oh, sorry, this is getting really loud. Um, yeah, so, so which kinds of resources might be interesting to integrate with this to help address things that the stakeholders might be interested in? Well, stakeholders, anyone basically, um, policymakers, botanists, uh, anyone that needs information we, for the list, for example, uh, the list is used um, by the um, uh, National Council for, um, what do you call it? Uh, for knowledge and uh, equitable benefit sharing. Da, da, da. It's used as a base to know which plants are Brazilian and, uh, and which researchers need to share benefits. So it's a, a uh, it's a reference to know not, not just what we have in the flora, but what do we need to share benefits. Um, and basically anyone that needs information on the flora. Um, what was the other part, sorry? How, what? Not sure if I know how to answer that. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I think so. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> I, I was just wondering if the character controlled fields are um, queryable and whether they're in some downloadable form that would be queryable. So I, I saw that you've got quite a, a controlled way of recording the characters. Um, I don't think they are, to be honest. Um, but I'm not sure. I could, I could see that. 
what we did, it, we, we put just the things on a spreadsheet and they, uh, the IT guys uploaded it into the system. <laughs> but I'm not sure if they're downloadable. But that might be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That is interesting. Uh, I'd like to follow, in fact, on the genome question and Charlie's question. They are, I mean, medicinal plants probably in what you have. And there are probably some records of the active compounds that have been collected from these uh, plants. So it, it could be of interest to go down, not necessarily to whole genome because it involves, a, I mean, some work, but uh, look, uh, look at um, what, is already, what has already been published at the molecular level mm -hmm. to see whether this can connect to the sort of thing we're doing. Yeah. We have uh, links on the system, as I showed, um, and we have a link to this platform called uh, Data Plant, um, and it's plant with M, plant with, from medicinal. But anyway, it was, uh, it was a project that was also financed under the HIFLOTA program, and it's a medicinal plants database. Um, obviously, it, it probably doesn't have everything, but we already have this link. Um, it was developed by um, the Federal University of Minas Gerais, one of our states. Um, and we already have this association, but if, you know, if we have more uh, platforms or even if this platform is improved and we can associate other plants, uh, it would be great. Uh, we also have uh, the common names for plants, but this was not our main focus, so we didn't ask much from taxonomists on this field, especially because many of the plants don't have common names, and it, sometimes, and we know the problems with common names. So, is there, the field is there, um, you can search for it, but it, it misses some information. And it's, we, can, we can integrate with other systems and DNA or you know, genome. And it's, it's feasible, as I said. Um, if I might ask the next question, or who, is someone else next? No? Okay, I'm clear to go. Okay. Um, my name is Colby Reed, and when I look at this data, I see potentially a really great benchmark set, for example, for uh, AI with images, machine learning. Mm -hmm. The potential there is potentially very like, sorry for the redundancy, but it's kind of exciting because this is, it's actually curated and labeled by taxonomists. So you have that expert insight plus the images yeah. and duplicate images of the same organisms, yeah. which you don't often get that. So I don't know. I just was wondering your thoughts on that and potential collaboration with people who do that kind of thing. We have thought about it. We had uh, students approaching us wanting to, to do things. Right. And we obviously said, well, if you, if you think of something, we're, we're more than happy to, you know, to help. But the diversity is immense. And sometimes it's not on what you see exactly, that, that you know, it's not exactly on the measures or on the shape. It, it, but of course, you need some curation. Um, we, we found it difficult. We couldn't think out of the box, and we couldn't find any. We, we had students saying that, oh, I went over. It's like, okay, if you find something and, and if you can propose them, we're happy, we're here. But it's very diverse. Right, um, right. Well, I mean, there's other, so iNaturalist is a good example yeah. of image mm -hmm. AI application in real life. Yeah. Right? What is this plant? Can you help me identify it? Mm -hmm. Programs get pretty close, they get pretty good. And it's possible, like, maybe cooperating with yeah. something that's already established like that or other Zooniverse projects, which is, I don't, Zooniverse is a mm -hmm. open data community curation project. Right. Um, and they have done a number of plant-oriented projects. So, like, maybe also getting data from them for comparison of other species on other continents. I mean, there's, there's a lot of potential for that. Either way, like, I'm always going to cheer on, like, a benchmark project. Yeah. No, it is. It is. A, I think it's, it's, it has all the potential. Um, I understand. I, I like. I, I I'm a big fan of iNaturalist. Uh, 
And I know it gives you some uh, options and some identification on things, but I'm, um, again, I'm not sure how it deals with the whole diversity we have, but we'll only find out when we try, right? And, and, and start learning about it. And, but we haven't done that <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, actually, now I have more of a comment than a question. <laughs> that I, I've played around with the API for uh, from Reflora a bit. So to David's question there, you can access uh, most of the information via the API, via an application programming interface, but you have to find it. It's not exposed. You have to kind of go into the details, but the information is there. And about the the question about the, the, the images, uh, I'm on... I'm very active in Wikipedia and Wikidata, and all the images and content in, in Reflora is in CC BY, and is very clearly licensed, and people are pulling that into the Wikipedia ecosystem and other ecosystems. So I think uh, even if you don't do any internal work on the AI thing, just because you have a fair resource with open licenses, and to be frank, even if you didn't have open license, they would use it anyway, but <laughs> as you have an, an open resource, it's pretty likely that, that all these AI things will, will get this and use it, so. Hope so. It will be amazing. All right, thank you so much. Can we have one more round of applause for Paula?